Hey, and welcome back to Winning Conversations. We are just getting rolling on our Summer Miracle Series. So we want to waste no time and jump right into our next story. We are excited today to have one of my best friends, Marty, here. How are you today? I'm wonderful. Marty! Yay! <laughs> Uh, I knew when we set out to find like summer miracles or miracles to talk about on this story, your story just kept coming to my mind. So I think it's going to be really fun to just talk it out and, and think about it. I know not everybody knows, uh, you, but you've been here for like your whole, like most of your whole life, right? Yeah. Since 2000. Since 2000. It's a long yeah. time. Yeah. When the doors opened the very first service, we were here. And so, yeah, I grew up preteens, youth pretty much. And now doing it all over with my family. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the, her first episode when we talked about it, I'll link it down in the show notes also. Um, but it's been really good. And uh, how, how long ago was it? So just for context, we're going to talk about this motorcycle accident. When was it? I forget. So I think it was, I think it was October of 2020. Tell us what happened. I know it was a motorcycle accident. Yeah. So Brad and I, um, we did a little day journey. Um, we were heading east um, and we were exiting and, you know, there's lots of gravel. So obviously gravel and motorcycles don't mix like at all, even um, like grass shavings. Like it doesn't do well. Um, and so the bike started kind of shaking and Brad tried to hold on as much as he possibly can. Um, and we ended up like sliding and the bike came out from underneath us. So then I go tumbling. Well, it wasn't just us um, on our journey out. We were riding with some friends because it's, it's funner to ride with a pack. Um, so uh -huh. we were riding with, you know, friends. And as we're fumbling, he goes one direction, I go another direction, um, that I, I kept hearing someone yelling like, Marty, get up and get over to the other side. And I'm like, okay. So I'm like trying to get up, but I was just thrown off a of motorcycle and like flipped. I don't know how many times. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, get up. Well then as I felt like I was trying to get up, I had this huge like hit in my back. And it ended up that another motorcycle that was behind us, their um, highway bar hit my back. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And it was like excruciating pain since then, you know, um, like with that in this moment. And so I just like I thought it was Brad because it was a familiar voice. So I thought it was my husband yelling at me, telling me to get up and to get off the road. Like you have like urgency, like get up, Marty, get off to the other side of the road. So I was like, okay, so every ounce, like I was like, okay, like let's do this. And I I thought someone came over to me and picked me up. You know, like when someone can't walk, you put your arm around them and they're like kind of limping over to the side. That's that's what I thought happened. <laughs> but come to find out after the fact, no one was there. So then as we're kind of walking through this and talking, you know, it out that it had to have been an angel. You know, like that was the only thing. And it obviously was a familiar voice because we we talk to God. We we know his voice. Like he's not a stranger to us, you know. Um, so just trying to, you know, get up and and um, get over. I just, you know, having an angel there to support us. Like we hear, right. you know, all the time that there we have our angels with us. We have our angel and they're there to protect us and all this stuff. Well, I hear it and I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. But that was a moment that like, it it was real. Like they are there to protect right. us mm -hmm. in those moments because after the, you know, the other couple of motorcycles that were behind us were vehicles and they were exiting. This was a highway, you know, yeah. this is 20 mm -hmm. <laughs> on a highway on an exit ramp, you know? Um, so got over to the side, you know, everyone was making sure all the, the people that we were with were making sure I was okay. Ambulance was already called, all the other stuff. Um, it turned out that I had five lower lumbar fractures, um, lots of um, road rash, and I had like a sprained ankle, but I had like a big chunk of um, road rash on there that was a pain to like, I don't know, do anything. That thing hurt so bad. Um, 
so, you know, had all this stuff. Brad's on the other side, you know, he kind of slid off off from other people so like he wasn't in the mix where everyone was was he hurt badly yeah so not as bad he just had a lot of road rash on his hand and he had to get stitches on his hand um so but that was it it was more i think of all the pressure of like what just happened yeah you know the fact that his wife was in pain and he didn't know he didn't know what was going to happen you know so he he had to walk out that it wasn't his fault. Yeah. You know, yeah. he had, he took that on really big after the accident. And so I just kept praying, like, it's not your fault, you know, praying Lord, like guide him, show him, bring people around him, surround him. So he knows that it's not, it's not his fault. Right. Yeah. So you went to the hospital, they mm-hmm. did all these tests and all the things. Yeah. All the things, and MRIs, everything. I was there for hours. Um, well, it's funny. They wouldn't put me in yet. You know, they were like, wait, I was in the waiting area at the ER. Yeah, they wouldn't put me in. And then I think someone said she was just in a motorcycle accident. Somebody see me, somebody. Yeah, so there was um, an ambulance that Uh came, but it was only two exits up where the hospital was. And so I was like, no, I'll just get in the back of the car because we had friends. So I was like, no, I'll just get in the back of the car and I'll yeah, just go, you know. That's about right. So we did. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I was fine. I was able to walk, you know, somewhat. Yeah. I was in pain, but I know how to push through pain. And you're right there. Right. I was right there. So, you know, got in the back of a car, um, you know, head over there. And so they're like, oh, okay, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. And then finally somebody was like, she was just in a motorcycle accident. And they're like, Oh, well, why didn't you guys tell us that before? We're like, you, you don't, you don't see it. Yeah. You know, there's, there's nothing here. Um, so then they immediately rushed me in the back and started taking all the x-rays and stuff like that. And so that's how I knew that I broke five lumbar mm-hmm. and all that. Um, that's how I knew that what happened. Well, they released me they're like, okay, well we can't do sur- Like there's no surgery. We want, we want you just to heal on your own. So they, um, they gave me like scrubs. The nurses there were amazing though. And the night crew that was there was so helpful. And they had scrubs. Wait, they went, this accident was that night? Yeah. Well, it was during the day, but by the time okay, I was okay, like, okay, you okay, know, through okay. all of the checks yes. and everything, um, it was pretty much at night. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they gave me scrubs um, to wear home because everything was, was hurting, pushing mm-hmm. on my back. And then thankfully we had um, family friends that I've known forever that they're like, hey, you can get in the back of the car with us and we'll just take you back home because it was two hour drive. So we were like in Tyler. So I don't like going in (laughs) in that direction because like I remember the exit. I remember all the things. So there's been one time and I was like, wait, this looks familiar. And Brad's like, oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, oh, I didn't realize we were going to be right there, you know. Um, So it was funny. So what was the healing process like? Yeah, so we got back um, and I, I want to say that was like a Tuesday or a Thursday. Um, and I just stayed at the house. It was really just recovering, laying. They gave me pain, pain medicine, but I didn't really, I'm like, whatever, you know. Um, like you didn't need it? I didn't really need it because, I mean, I took some of it. But then after a while, I'm like, I don't, I don't really need it, you yeah. know? So, and it, it was harder pain medicine and I, I just don't like taking that. Um, so just using wisdom, like I needed it at first, but mm-hmm. then when I didn't, um, and so that Sunday came, so it wasn't even a week. And I told Brad, I was like, I have to go to church. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't like. It was an urgency. It was an urgency in me. I have to go to church. Like it always takes me back to the woman with um, the issue of blood, and that she was just like, if I only touch the hem of his garment, not just I watch would. online, like be in service. Like yes, <laughs> not watch online, be in service, but have that moment of like, you know, like her urgency was like, if I just touch the hem, I will be healed. Mm-hmm. And that urgency, like I didn't, I knew I had to be there. Well, I couldn't wear shoes. I tried to get a brace. I couldn't wear shoes. Brad had to go get me Crocs. Listen, don't hate on Crocs, okay? <laughs> I was the biggest Croc hater until I got them. So. Right. I mean, they helped. Yeah, they they're supported great. me. But, they're you great. know, I I don't know. I'm always one that I like to 
wear nice, nice. Yes. Stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And so for me, I was like, I could wear this, you know, t-shirt looking dress, you know, and Crocs. And I had a pillow <laughs> and I came and I sat at the very back of the church <laughs> and Brad's like, it doesn't matter. I was like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I just right. need to be here. here. Right. And then, um, during the service, I mean, it was such a blur because all I knew was like, okay, come on. Like, I know I'm supposed to be prayed for. Like, come on. Like, when am I coming up to get prayed for? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to go to service and I hope they do an altar call so I can go up and I can, you know, be healed. I was like, no, come on. Like, I know I'm here and I know like I'm going to get healed. And so they did. They called me up. They started praying for me. And it was so like, I've never felt something like that before. And so... I got hot, like super hot from like the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet, hot. And then like my whole body like, like jerked. And I like, honestly, I felt like that was the moment that like my whole back like snapped into place Mm -hmm. and it, but it didn't hurt. It did not hurt. I didn't hurt at all. And I had to like sit down because it was the the anointing was so strong that I remember them pulling a chair because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't want to fall and hurt my back even more. But I knew that like I was I was going down. So thankfully they pushed a chair, (laughs) you know, underneath me. But I just had to sit there and I couldn't move like the weight, like I felt like God was still in my back mending Mm -hmm. the stuff. And I know it sounds weird. But that's where it's like, it's unexplainable, like how God heals. But from that moment, that, well, forward, that, that was the, mirac- <laughs> the miracle comes. Yes, yeah. the miraculous, yeah. you know, of it, the supernatural. So he met me there, like my faith, like I didn't come not expecting. I came fully knowing that yeah. when I walked out of that door, that I was completely healed. And that's what happened, you know? So I think a couple of days later, we had to get um, new MRI images and so we went and got them done and you know took them back to the doctor and they read read it to us and they were like um your back is like pristine like you would have never known that you just had an accident a couple weeks ago you know and it was just like and I knew that you know in the meantime just resting and really taking it easy laying down you know that kind of thing and so I knew like there was wisdom with it of just you know, taking it easy. Right. Um, So then when they read all this, you know, in the the back, and then I asked them, I was like, well, how's my spine? You know, and it was just like a random, like that just came up in my spirit, like check about my spine, like what's going on here, you know? And I was like, you know, when I was a kid, I had scoliosis and they're like, you don't have scoliosis. Like, look at your image, like your, your spine's completely straight. And so to me, you know, we always hear like, God doesn't just restore back to where you were at. He goes even more and above. Well, that's what happened. Not only did he restore me from the accident, but he restored my back, back to the way that he designed me originally, Mm -hmm. you know? So it wasn't just that. So I think that's really fun. I think that's incredible. You know, like how, like, yeah, I was healed from scoliosis, you know, and that's, that's, I don't know. I just, I'm like, Lord, you're so good. And so mighty that, you know, and there's moments that, yeah, like, okay, if he can do that for me, then he can do that to others. And so from the accident and my healing process, it put a fire into me of like, if he can do this for me, then he wants to do it to other people. And so it was like, oh no, you need, you want me to pray for your back? Done. I'll pray for you. Like you need healing done. And it opened my heart for people who need the healing to like, well, we have that healing power in us. We just need to reach out and, and touch, you know? And so I, after that, I mean, even now, like I love when people ask like, can you pray for me? absolutely. You need healing. Absolutely. I will definitely pray for you. You know, just because it's a different, like he did it, he did it for me, you know, and one part of, you know, through the whole accident, the song, my testimony from elevation. Mm -hmm. And there's a part, I think it's in the bridge. It says, um, if, if I'm not dead, then God's not done. And that was so big that greater things are still to come. So that was like what was burning inside of me. I'm like, 
I'm not dead. So God's not done. And like the whole time they said at the hospital that I was like ministering to all the <laughs> nurses and like all the tech people, which is not my normal personality, you know, sure. but they're like, no, because they're like, oh, well, they're saying that. I'm like, well, you don't know my God. Like that's what was coming up in me right. because the entire ride, when we, when I ride, even when I was little, I always prayed in the spirit. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm literally singing in the spirit, praying in the spirit. And so I was already strengthening myself up. Right. Like it edifies us up. And so I think that's what happened. Like I was praying and getting all this, you know, my body prepared Mm -hmm. for whatever, not knowing, you know, but just preparing. And so then when they were interacting, I'm like, yeah, but God's going to heal me. Watch. God's going to heal me. Watch. God's going to heal me. Uh Like you say that, but that's not, that's not my covenant, you know? And it was just so funny because that boldness is not a normal, <laughs> you know, like I'm more shy when it comes to those things. So, right. Have you been on a motorcycle since? No. Are you? No, not scared. Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's <laughs> yeah. what I was thinking. Like, cause it could, I mean, it could ruin your, yeah. It and it make of, you not want to do something like that again. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, um, we've had so many people afterwards and they still, some of them kind of come up to us asking, you know, friends and stuff like that. And we're like, it's not that it's just that, that already was not a priority because we have Mayren, you yeah. know, she's nine. Right. She can't come along with us and do that. Mm-hmm. So it was already in the process of like, you know, I think this was like our like, okay, we're going to do this ride and then we're going to kind of yeah. like stop. Um, and so with with that, you know, it's not that I'm nervous to get on. It's just there's not that desire yeah, yeah, to get on, you know. And yeah, they're like, okay, if you fall off a horse, get back on it. I still enjoy motorcycles. When I see them yeah. around, I always like... I'm that person. I'm that girl. That's my like, mother, oh, look at that motorcycle. literally every time she sees a motorcycle, she will stop and pray for the person on the motorcycle. Yeah. Every single one. Yeah. Wherever we are. Yeah. yeah. I do it. I do it in my heart. I'm just yeah. like, Lord, protect them, protect them. Yeah. Just because I see, I see, I mean, you know what? And you've yeah. been, I've been in, in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is just an amazing story of God's goodness, even through things that, um, perhaps aren't, I mean, the, the accident was not from God. It wasn't like mm, no. God ordained. So he had an opportunity to heal your scoliosis. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and that was not it. Yeah. You could have done that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, um, well, what happened after that, as the healing process went on, what were the things that, uh, really were the icing maybe on the cake for you? Yeah. So while I was resting in Um, you know, I, I pretty much was in bed. Like I couldn't, you know, really even take a shower. Like, thankfully we bought a house, you know, a few months prior. And so they had like, um, like little seats in the shower. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was able, because I could not stand, I couldn't stand for a long time, you know, cause my back was still being healed, but the church family, wow. Like they just came and surrounded us like, I don't know. I mean, it it was God, right? Like we didn't really have, like our family, I think it was just hard for them to see us, like our, you know. Immediate. Immediate family, family, right? right? Um, But the church family came up. I mean, I knew that I was like, okay, I I don't have any big loose fitting clothes. And so I remember calling, you know, um, a friend from here, from church and was like, can you go to Walmart or something? I need like big moo-moos is basically what I told her. <laughs> I was like big, you know, yeah, t-shirt, loose fitting. loose fitting. I can't have anything elastic. I was like, please help me. So absolutely was her thing. She went and I don't know how much, I mean, so much. And I still have some of the, like one of the shirts that says not today, Satan on it. And it's like an extra large, you know? So I still wear it to bed because I'm like, you know, not today. And it was just, she did things that was funny that made me laugh. Like yeah. one of the nightgowns was like weird cats and dogs and animals. And they have like sunglasses, like just things to make me laugh, Yeah, you know? And so I thought that was, you know, so sweet that she did, you know, that we had so many come and bring us meals. Mm -hmm. We had, um, a family go and buy groceries, you know, so Brad didn't have to leave me, you know, that was a big thing. He wanted to make sure I was okay. And, um, we had people helping us with Mayrin, you know, that's really, you know, some of our immediate family were able to go pick her up from school and take her home. Um, we had, because I liked 
to keep my house tidy, you know, it was bothering me that all all of our church families coming in and out and the house is not clean. Like it's dirty. I haven't done anything. You know, I'm not able to do things. That's not a priority. My healing was a priority. Um, so we had another church family member. Um, they, they had a cleaning crew come in and like deep clean the house for me. So I don't even have to think about it, you know? And like, I don't know, it was just, ugh, it's just so amazing that like, how much the church family has just come alongside and just like, no, we're here for you. Like it wasn't even a question. And and some of them weren't even like, I don't know, super close. They were yeah. just like, no, we're here. They like, saw a need. Yes. And they and met they it. To, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't because they wanted to get something out of it. Like they were just being a blessing. Yeah. You know, and so I think from that, I'm always like, okay, there's a meal train, I'm on it. Because it was so big for us. Like that was so helpful on our side of it that it's like, well, we, you know, people met our need. So now like that was, that's a way that we always give back. Like anytime that there's a meal train, I'm like, that's easy peasy. I can do that. You know, yeah. like that's, that's one way I can help, you know, contribute. So just looking back on the whole experience, I mean, God, not only did a miracle, but uh, the provision, the angelic protection and help. Yeah. Like there's a lot of pieces. When you look back um, with kind of a clarity at where you are now, how did it impact your faith? What what happened with your walk with God? I mean, it just grew stronger. You know, it's like, no, he is here. He, you know, our angels are here. He is everywhere we go. Like he, he's there, you know, and I think, I don't know, growing up, in the church, you know, I was just having a conversation with my spiritual parents and I was like, you know, when we're younger, we take our parents' faith. That's what we live on is our parents' faith. And we don't know things, you know, we are just like, oh, well, they say this. So this is what, yeah. you know, this is what it is then, you know, and that's not it. Like I've had to learn over the years that no, it's my faith. How am I being intimate with God? How am I doing this? Um, and so it just made that stronger. Like, no, like, okay, I hear that, you know, angels are around us and they're there to protect us. And, you know, God is always with us. And in your spirit, man, you'll have these unctions. And, you know, it was just more of like, no, it's real. Like he's there. He is protecting you. Because I mean, I could have easily gotten like actually ran over. Right. <laughs> you know, like I, I could have, I mean, um, care flight was like on standby because it's a thing out there that there's lots of really bad accidents. Yeah. So in like the enemy instantly could have ended my life, right. you know? And I think that that's something that like with, like I was saying with the song that it was like, no, I'm not dead. So like God has so much more in store and this is just a testimony. This is something just to walk through it. And so holding on to that, it's like, no, like I do have tasks. I have assignments on my life and God is wanting to use me because if I didn't, if, if it wasn't a thing, then I wouldn't be here now talking to you guys, yeah. you know? So I think it just encouraged my faith. Like, no, this is, it is real. It is real. Well, I want to know what you would say to encourage other people who don't have that same faith that you have, you know, who wasn't, who isn't, who doesn't know to immediately start speaking these like, oh, well, that's not my God. That's like you were saying, mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't know that or somebody who doesn't, that's not the first instinct when you get in an accident or whenever you have a need, like a healing that needs to be, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. What would you say to them? I mean, get your spiritual language, <laughs> you know, be filled with the Holy Spirit because that's honestly, I think what saved me because I was like through the whole process from when we left the house, something fell off mm -hmm. and that's the Holy spirit telling me like, Hey, and, I, and you know, there was a thought like, should we be going? Should I just stay back that day and not go? Mm -hmm. There was those thoughts. Yeah. But I was like, I don't know what's going on. And so I'm like, I'm just going to pray literally for like two hours straight, I was praying in the spirit. So that's all I knew. Something fell off and all I knew was pray in the spirit, yeah. get wisdom, get guidance, right? Pray in the spirit. Pray. We hear that all that. Pray in the spirit, Marty. Okay, you can get answers. Pray in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, well, 
I was praying in the spirit, yeah. you know. Um, and I had the thought right before it happened, what if we get in an accident? Like I had the thought. And I was like, no, devil, stop trying to put things in my head. Well, little did I know, I felt like the Holy Spirit was trying to like tell me. So then, then it, you know, I encourage you when you are praying, listen. Yeah. You know, because I mean, it could have been avoided, you know, so that's on our, that's on my part. That's on our part. You know, we could have, I could be like, you know, I actually have this unction and I'm not going. So it made me be more sensitive to the spirit Mm -hmm. and like, okay. Lord, is this you or is this the enemy just trying to plant things? In well, my that's head? also the cool thing about God is even <laughs> if you miss it like that, yeah, he he's still you. protecting you. Yeah. 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 His he's, goodness is there. Yeah. Even when you miss it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh, you didn't listen. Okay. Here, get in the accident. Yeah. No, like that's not it. And it was not God. Like a hundred percent was right. not yeah. God. You know, I just want to put that again out there. Like this was definitely an attack on our life you know, and okay, well, God's going to use it for good, right? Yeah, like right. I will share the goodness of God through it and not focus on, I was down. No, I was healed. An angel picked me up and took me across the side of the road. And, you know, not only did he heal my back, but my scoliosis was healed, you know, like right. there, all of it is good. You know, there's all good in it. So, you know, it, it the Bible is really clear that the fiery darks are going to come. Yeah. yeah, And it's that shield of faith that you were able to put up. And even though the fiery dark came, God's goodness has shown through that, which yeah. I think is the definition of winning in life. Yes. I mean, it really is, which yeah. is really what our, our church is all about is winning in life. So I know we always do this question, but just in light mm-hmm. of your story and how God worked through you, um, what does that statement now mean to you? I feel like the the statement now and just making winners in life, like the church is here to equip you, to, you know, teach you when you are in circumstances like this. Like they they preach it all the time from the pulpit of like praying the spirit. If you don't have, you know, your your language, like come up, be filled, you know, like the, the church is here to help equip you, you know, for that. And if you don't know, ask, like there's leaders here that will help guide you through it. Like that's the whole point of it. And so making winners, like that's what God wants us is to get connected to a body, to be equipped. So then when you're in situations like that, then the word does come out, you know, like the more words you are, are putting in, in your time with the Lord, like in moments like that, that's, what's going to come up because that's you, you're a spiritual being. So that's, what's going to come up first. I love that. I love it. (laughs) Great. Good Good answer. Well, thank you so much, Marty, for joining us. This was such a good story for our little summer series. It was great. Um, Audience, be sure to tune in next week for another winning conversation and another celebration of miracles. You know, if you have a testimony to share also, if you want to go to our testimony page on our website, I will link it in the show notes below where you can get a hold of that and share your testimony with us. We want to just to continue to encourage each other in faith and share these stories of what God's done in our house um, and around the world. So um, tune in next week for another winning conversation and summer miracle. <laughs>